Hey guys, I've got a really cool metal riff for you to learn today. It's in the key of E minor, but there's some concepts behind this riff. It's a pretty simple riff. Actually, it's a two-part riff, but there are some concepts behind the riff that as we go through this riff, as you learn, and you're about to hear the riff, by the way, as we learn uh, the riff and these concepts, I think it's really going to push your songwriting and your riff writing to that next level because it's going to open some doors in here in the old noggin there as you go to sit down to write riffs. So here's the riff you're going to learn. All right, so we're going to dig right into this riff. We're going to jump in. Now, it's a, again, it's a two-part metal riff, so I'm going to break this up into, of course, two parts, two bite-sized chunks. Now I'm kind of hungry, but make sure you hang around. Oh man, that's bad. Make sure you hang around till after the video because I'm actually going to do some tone talk with you. We always love to talk about tones because I want to share what I'm using, what you're hearing out of this. So hang around for that at the end, but let's dig right into the lesson. I'm actually going to record this because I'm using, well, I'm not going to tell you yet. I'm going to tell you at the end. Anyway, let's get into the riff. I'm going to play just the first part of this riff because again, we're going to break this into two sections here. So here's the first part. Okay, so for the most part, pretty simple, but the first concept, and again, we're talking more concepts than the actual riff itself, because uh, these are the things that's going to help you when you're writing your own riffs. These are the, these are the things I kind of want you to take with you and expand on. That's the whole point of this lesson here, but I do want you to learn the riff. So the first concept we're going to cover is going back and forth between palm muting a string, a note, and then playing those single notes, kind of going back and forth between those two strings. This can be a little difficult if you're just starting out getting into this specific style, these types of riffs here. So let's break that first part down. I'm playing the power chord first, and we are in standard tuning, by the way. I'm playing that E power chord first, and what I'm doing is I'm basically going back and forth between those two notes in that power chord, the open E and then that second fret of the A string. But then I'm also going to be using, as we're going back and forth, the third fret of that A string as well, kind of going back and forth. So let me play that part, just that part real slow. Okay, so pretty cool, and again, that's a concept that you can just carry uh, throughout any of the riffs that you're writing, and it doesn't always have to be on the open string. You could do that with a power chord if you want to just play, uh, go back and forth between those two notes of a power chord, and then maybe move that second note around a little bit like we did up here, going from the second to the third fret. So again, that's just something you can kind of expand on as you're writing your own riff. So that's the first technique. Uh, and there's probably a cool fancy word for it, and I just can't think of it, but we're just playing back and forth between two strings, and we're incorporating, of course, that single note. So we're getting into these single note rhythms here. The next part of the riff is where we're just using really a part of a scale, right? It's not even a full scale. And I say that because if you're new to getting into metal guitar, and in those of you who have been playing for a while, just please bear with me here uh, for the new folks. If you're new, sometimes when you're playing a lot of notes, a lot of single notes, and this really isn't a lot, but it can look overwhelming. But when, when, when we break it down, we're not even playing a complete scale, and we're only playing really a few notes here. And we're also just kind of jumbled up in this one little section. So I, I say that just to kind of mentally make it a little bit easier for you. So let's go through that part of the riff. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now you see how we went from high note to low note, okay, just all the way across three strings there. We're using the, the D, A, and E string. Then once we get to that E string, we hop back over to the A string. And that's a little technique, which I don't really have a name for it, but as you're going from, from high to low or low to high, you kind of might want to go back real quick, right? It just makes the riff captivating, you know what I mean? It just kind of gives it that snappy like, Oh, okay, that was cool. It just makes the riff sound cooler in my opinion. So we're going from high to low, and then before we finish the riff, we go back, right? We go back from low to high real quick and then finish off. So let me go through that one more time. And there's also another little technique that I use that when I'm playing it faster, which I'll do, uh, that you'll hear. So we'll go over that as well. So you heard that little squeal there on that first note of that riff, that second fret of the D string. And all I'm doing there is just a slight little pinch harmonic. And it's, it's one of those pinch harmonics that sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes you get lucky with these things. But I do have another video on pinch harmonics if you're kind of new to that. Some of you know how to do that really well, probably a lot better than I do. Uh, you're, you're good on that, so you know what I'm talking about. But these are those little subtle pinch harmonics that you just kind of throw in there it's not like a full-on pinch harmonic but you just kind of like just real quick just really like it captivating the listeners what this is doing you're like whoa what was that that was cool uh but anyway if you if you need help with pinch harmonics uh just check this video i'll put it up here you can check that out after you watch this video all right now for the second part of this really cool metal riff in E minor. So really, this is the same thing, uh, but we're just changing up that last little part. And actually, we're probably simplifying it in a sense, because instead of playing on three strings, we're only playing on two. And again, I like to present it in that manner so that, so that you don't think of it as overwhelming if you're kind of new at this. So let's play that riff real quick, and then we'll break it down. <laughs> Now, real quick, you also notice I do a slide. I didn't go over that in the beginning kind of saving the juicy stuff for the end there, which that's a really easy thing to do. But I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, but let's go through this riff first. So there's no need to go through the first part of that riff. It's the exact same thing that we went over in the first part of the riff. We just replicate that. This is a cool strategy to use when you're writing riffs. This is a really cool strategy to use. Uh, so you've got a cool riff that you that you want to you want to use for a song. Then you've got a second part to that riff, or maybe you want to write a second part to that riff, but you don't want it to be the same. So maybe to keep like the theme of the riff, if you will, maybe you keep the first part, the first half of that the same, just change the last half of it like we just did. So we've got, we've got this one riff, it's got this piece and that piece, right? One, two. Then the second riff, it's got that same first piece, but we changed the second piece. So again, this is a really cool strategy to, to really help you simplify things while at the same time having some, uh, some dynamics in the riff. So I hope that makes sense. So anyway, this second part here, and I'll play that again real slow, very, very simple. Again, we're on two strings instead of three this time. That simplifies things. And what we're doing here is we're starting on the second string, the A string, uh, fifth fret. We're walking down, right, from high to low, but then, again, we're using that same technique where we quickly go right back to a higher note really, really quick before we finish out the riff on the way down. So let's go through that part one more time. <laughs> Now, real quick, one thing we didn't go over in this whole thing, you'll notice that some of those single notes I palm muted and some 
I didn't quite palm mute. What I want to share with you real quick is just kind of a palm muting technique that I use a lot because uh, you'll notice there's some differentiation in, in kind of textures of the palm mute if that makes sense. Some are palm muted a little tighter than others and some uh, I didn't palm mute at all. What I like to do when I'm playing metal rhythms is I've got my palm pretty close to that bridge the entire time and oftentimes I'll do kind of a light touch and I'll kind of move my palm just up and down as I play, okay? And just depending on what note I'm playing and what I want the, the texture of that note to be, the feel of that note to be, uh, I'll determine, well, what kind of palm mute that I want. Sometimes I'll palm mute, just a very straightforward palm mute. It's on there firmly. Sometimes I'll raise it up a little. Sometimes I won't palm mute at all. So there's really no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. Uh, this is just something kind of hard to explain, actually. So I, hopefully you guys are understanding this, but it's just a technique that as you play, um, you know, as you play for years and years and years, uh, as you put in the time and practice, you kind of like, you just get used to these different nuances that you have in your own style of playing. But in short, I'm just, I'm just using a variation of types of palm muting. Sometimes it's a hard palm mute, and sometimes it's a more lighter palm mute. Sometimes it's not a palm mute at all. And I'll just mix those in throughout the riff to get those different different tones. And I'll play the entire riff for you one more time so you'll kind of hear and see what I'm doing. But before we do that, what's that first part? How did I start that out? With a really cool slide, <laughs> just like this. Nothing real special. I can't even tell you where I start, but I what I will tell you is I don't fret anything. Hey, don't fret. <laughs> oh, bad pun. So I don't fret anything, right? I'm not really playing an actual note. I just got my, my finger. I use my, my third finger, I think anyway. I had to think about this stuff when I'm showing you because I really don't know. I really I just don't even think about it. But I'm just going, I might I might do one rake right one rake across the strings and I don't hit I don't hit all six strings right I'm probably hitting the first few there again I'm not even paying attention to what I hit it's just a it's a, a sound effect really right there's no right or wrong way to do this but sometimes I'll, I'll do a I'll do a, a down and up stroke kind of like this actually that was a, a down up down I think right let's do that again Just gives it a little bit different effect is all uh, whereas other times I might just do a straightforward downstroke so I kind of felt at that time I started around where the 14th frets are not really a, a big deal here like I said it doesn't really matter where you start just kind of uh, just kind of practice that you know and it doesn't even matter what finger you use I sometimes I use multiple fingers That's it. So let's play this riff one more time out in the open here. And I want you to hear, what I want you to pay attention to is some of the palm muting type stuff that I do down there that we just talked about. And then of course, after that, we'll get right into some tone talk. I want to share these settings with you. <laughs> Now let's have a little tone talk guys, but real quick first, if you do not have my free metal guitar practice guide, metal riffs and licks, actually it's turned into like a mini practice course with videos and tabs that you can download. Make sure you get that, okay? There's a link in the description of this YouTube video. And once you get that, I'll email you all the information to go get your video course and your tabs, again, that you can download. Now, if you already have the free practice guide, your next obvious step is to get into my premium metal guitar course, Metal Riff Master. There's a link to that course as well and in the description of this YouTube video. All right, so what am I using for this tone here? I think you guys have probably heard this before, so I'm, I'm not going to keep it from you. It's Positive Grids, Bias, uh, Bias Amp 2 and FX2. It's a combination of both because I, and I'll show you when we get in here, I'll give you a screenshot. Here, here it is, you can see it. So here's the amp I'm using. I'm using the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier Sim, which is called Treadplate here. 
So I've got that and let's just quickly look at my settings. You can see my settings on the screen here. Nothing fancy guys. My settings are <laughs> almost kind of boring. I mean everything's pretty much straight up the middle with the, except the little boost on the treble, a little cut on the mids and uh, presence, you know, just usually depends on what amp I'm using to whether I cut it a little or boost it a little. Of course you can see the settings here. Uh, the gain is nothing, nothing outrageous. I didn't crank the gain all the way up or anything like that. Where the real tone comes in with this amp simulator, and I have talked about this before, uh, is the type of speaker and cab that I'm using with Positive Grids Bias Amp 2. Uh, real quick though, by the way, so this amp is Bias Amp 2. It's, it's the tread plate in Bias Amp 2, not the one in Bias FX. I'm using Bias FX so that I can use the FX FX. Bias FX, yeah, that. So what you can do, you can pull, if you own both plugins, and actually I have a blog post, so I'll put that in the description of this video as well. If you, if you wanna go read about, uh, there's a video as well on how to, how to use both these plugins. I know it's kinda confusing. I wish they just had one plugin that covered everything. Cause I do like the amps in Bias Amp 2 a little bit better than the ones in FX. I mean, there's not a substantial difference either way, but I just, I favor the tread plate in Bias Amp 2 than the one in Bias FX. So here's the magic. Well, there's two pieces of magic. For one, yes, I'm using Bias FX, mainly so that I can use the noise gate, which is needed for any of these amps, the high gain amps, and also the booster pedal or the overdrive pedal, the little green overdrive here. I guess that's modeled after a tube screamer. I'm just, I'm assuming, I don't know. Don't really care. It just sounds good and works good with this amp. The other piece of what I call the magic, and this has been out for a long time, by the way. This is where I think Positive Grid, and I am not a spokesperson for them. I'm not sponsored by them or, you know, or any of that stuff. This is just a plugin I've chosen to use over the years, probably more than, well, yeah, definitely more than any other plugin. Anyway, though, uh, the magic here is the Celestian speakers that they added to the package, the Elite package. And when I got the Elite package with the Celestian speakers, to me, that changed everything. Without that, uh, the Positive Grid Bias Amp and FX, it'd be just kind of like, meh, it's okay. It's good, but it's not great. But these Celestian speakers, oh, it makes them awesome. So let me break down what I do real quick here, okay? So for the full mix that you heard, and I'll play it again for you, I'll play it again for you. Uh, the full mix that you heard and about to hear again, you heard it in the beginning and, you, and I'm gonna play it again for you. Uh, I'm using, I'm recorded two tracks by the way, you guys know I record two rhythm tracks, hard pan each one, that's just how I do things, that's how a lot of bands do things, I think. But I started doing that before I knew how bands recorded, so hey. I guess it's, it's my idea for me. <laughs> anyway, but I use two types of selection speakers for that. One, I use the V30. So you can see that on screen here, the V30. Um, there's an SM, Shure SM57 mic simulator that I'm using. So that's the mic I'm using here. Uh, so yeah, that's the V30, the Celestian V30. Again, that comes with the Elite package. Now, that's for the track you hear on the left side. And then head over to the track that you hear on the right side. I'm actually using, again, the Celestian speaker sim here. I'm using the Greenback, right? So this is the Greenback speaker here, and I'm using the same mic. I just found that this Shure SM57 simulator, uh, to me, it just sounds better than all the other. All the other mics sound like a little muffled and like you're in some kind of cave or whatever, but the SM57 sim, I think they did a good job on that. Uh, so yeah, so that's the two speakers I use, the Celestian speakers, and they make all the freaking differences. <laughs> oh man, so that's like the core reason why I still favor the Positive Grid plugins over all the other stuff that's out there. I'm not saying it's better, but for me it's better, right? I think sometimes we get into this thing to where, no, this is better because it's the newest and it has so much stuff or blah, blah, blah. Look, what's better, what works better for you or what works best for you, well, that's just that and that's okay. Uh, you know, this works best for me. Anyway, let's hear this tone one more time. Alright guys, don't forget to check the links in the description of this YouTube video. If you don't have my free practice course, grab that, Metal Riffs and Licks. 
uh, if you've got that already, or if you just want to jump into my premium metal guitar course called Metal Riff Master, uh, those links are in the description of this video, along with several other links if you guys want to support me, listen to my music. I've got albums out there on all the platforms. You know, you can click on those links or just Google my name and I, I pop up. So, guys, thank you so much for supporting my channel and my videos. I've got some really cool stuff ahead. I've got some really exciting videos and that I'm going to be making for you, as always, but I don't know, for some reason, these next few videos I'm going to be making, well, I'm just super excited about, so I can't wait for you to see them. Guys, again, thank you for supporting my channel. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next video. Until then, well, you know what to do. Keep it metal.